Okay, Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this night, Lord. I pray your perfect will be done tonight, Lord. I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth. I pray, Lord, that uh, your people will be touched by you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, what I'm asking the Holy Spirit tonight to do is deliverance. This is going to be a night of deliverance. And the Holy Spirit is ready to do that. But you guys got to really want it. Okay? The, the Lord, the anointing is going to be so strong that you're going to feel something. If you feel something, I don't want you to be nervous or anything like that. That just says, okay, the Lord wants to deal with something. Because the Holy Spirit is letting you know, hey, wait a minute, I'm stirring this up because you need to get this dealt with. Does it make sense that the Holy Spirit is doing that? So... The Holy Spirit is doing you a favor. He's letting you know. He's stirring it up. Donnie can't stir nothing up. I'm letting you know it right now. The Holy Spirit does the ministry of deliverance. It's the Holy Spirit that does the um, does all of this. So just pay attention to yourself. And um, if you feel something, praise the Lord for that. That's a good thing because I want everybody free tonight. Amen. So what stirs up demons? What is it that stirs it up where a pastor can speak to you and you feel this? There's something in you that feels uncomfortable, an unexplained fear. What is that? The anointing. It's the anointing. The anointing. So what I want to talk about tonight is the anointing. And then we're going to go into prayer. And we're going to do some deliverance tonight. Amen? Amen. So the anointing. And the thing about the anointing, you don't see it in everyday church. God wants to ask church. If you haven't read the book of Acts, you should. There's a lot of miracles that happen in that book. A lot of beautiful things, a move of the Holy Spirit that happened. And I really do believe that, if, that we're, we're coming, we're getting that way. I believe an Acts church is, on, is, is, is coming soon. The Lord is already working on that. I think a lot of churches that where there is no move of the Holy Spirit, I believe the Lord is going to do away with those churches. We're, I believe we're close if not there in the last days. So the Lord wants an Acts church. And you know that in the book of Acts, it records at least 20 specific miracles. In the book of Acts, 20 miracles that happened. I'm just going to kind of go through some of them. In Acts 2.2, 2, that was the sounds of rushing wind. 2.3, the tongues of fire. The miraculous speech in 2.4. A lame man healed in Acts 3. 1 through 10. Building shaking. Acts 4, 31. A sudden death of Ananias and Sapphira. Acts 5, 1 through 11. Imprisoned apostles freed by angels. Acts 5, 17 through 21. Do everyone here believe in angels? Yes. Angels are real. I have, the Lord has blessed me and opened up my eyes to see angels. There's angels in here. Angels have assisted me numerous times in ministry sessions. Some of you have seen angels, but know that they're real. But you know how angels are activated? By faith. You have to believe. All of heaven is activated by faith. And I'm just going to go through a few more miracles that I found to be exciting. Saul blinded and healed. Acts chapter 9, verse 8 through 19. Um, Paul freed from prison by earthquakes. Acts 16, 25 through 27. Paul unaffected by a viper's bite. Acts 28, 3 through 5. And so on and so on and so on. God used so many people throughout the Bible that were very anointed. And when I think about Moses, how anointed he was, how he parted the sea, it was an anointing that did that. 
you know, and when I think about even the, 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 the things that Samson did, was the, the, hands of, the hand of God was on Samson, it was the anointing that was on him. And throughout the Bible, Paul, the many things that he did, it was an anointing. We have seen so many miracles in this ministry because of the anointing. We have seen so many people set free. We have uh, been uh, in South Carolina, and we saw a blind person that had seen in our life, uh, Pastor Richard, you remember that, that was able to see miracles and people that were bound by demons that were set free. You know, I've seen all kind of manifestations, snakes, animal spirits set free by the power of God. People bound up by demons and their demons are fearing the anointing of the Lord. And it's beautiful to see how the Lord loves us so much and he will provide that anointing to set people free. It is amazing. And you know, one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 10 and 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. Back then, in those days, the yoke um, is like a, like a cross wood that you see between two animals. You know, and some people would put a yoke upon their shoulder and it would, you know, used to carry water back in the day with that. But the yoke I'm talking about is, what is the yoke? upon your life? Is it poverty? Is it lack? Is it witchcraft? Is it suicidal thoughts? Is it addiction? Is it emotional wounds that you're having a difficult time getting over? What is the yoke in your life? The yoke in one's life comes from the devil. All of those are negative things that come from the, from the devil. So I want, to, I want everyone to understand what, what, what is the anointing? What is the anointing? The anointing is the power of God that he puts in his vessels. It's the power of God that he puts in his vessels. The anointing of the Holy Spirit that caused the power to destroy the yoke of the enemy. The anointing of the Holy Spirit that comes in power to destroy the yoke. The ministry, deliverance is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because again, people are not able to do those things, uh, to cast demons out. It's, it's the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit that pushes these demons out, that able to get to those protector parts, to deal with these altars, to break these generational curses. We're vessels that the Lord uses. The Lord uses people. He uses people since, since, since the, the biblical days. And he still does. Same yesterday, today, and forever. God uses people to do his work. And that's how he operates. He enjoys using people to do that. You know, we can uh, put limits on the anointing. And, and when you do that, you limit what God wants to do. For example, you have to completely surrender to access the anointing. You have to completely surrender to the Lord. Now, there, are, there are people who want to, want to tell God how they want to be delivered. Tell God how they want to be healed. No, God can heal you in the way he wants to. Amen. He can deliver you in the way you want to. But there are so many people that I even minister to, even in here. Well, this pastor, this is what I want you to do. This is what needs to be done. No, why don't you let me listen to the Holy Spirit? Because he knows you better than you know yourself. And that's what we do. We listen to the Holy Spirit. But, but there are so many people who want to limit. And when you do that, 
it is, 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 is difficult to access the anointing because the anointing is powerful and anointing destroys the works of the enemy. But a lot of times we want to control the anointing. We want to determine how we want to be healed and delivered. God is restoring his power in the body of Christ. I really strongly believe that. And it is, it is his, his will for us to walk in the anointing. So what is the key to access the anointing? What is the key to access the anointing? If you want to access the anointing for your healing, for your deliverance, what is the key? It's the key of faith. You got to really want it and you got to believe. You got to believe that God wants to heal you. You got to believe that God wants to deliver you. You got to believe. You got to want it. You got to trust him, not doubt Doubt and unbelief will destroy accessing the anointing. You have to want it. How bad? How bad do you really want to be free? How bad do you want to be healed? Let's look at the book of, uh, let's go to the, the Gospels. And, uh, Luke, let's look at Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 43 through 48. Here we go. This is an example of a person that really wanted to be healed. Luke chapter 8, verse 43 through 48. It says, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years now, 12 years, who has spent all of her livelihood on phys physicians and could not be healed by any, she came from behind and touched the border of his garment. Now, she was in a crowd. She wanted to be healed. She wanted it that much. She ran. She went through people just to touch his garment. And the Bible says immediately her flow of blood stopped. She wanted it so bad that she went to the crowd. She did what she had to do to be healed. And that's what God wants from you. He wants you to really want it. Are you willing to go through a crowd to get that touch, to access the anointing? You got to want it. You got to want it. And that's how God is. What about deliverance? There are people that come here that don't really want it. They're like, oh, well, let me just see. Let me just check it out. But you know that there's stuff there. You know you've been tormented in your dreams at night. You know that there are spirits that are visiting you, witches, or people doing witchcraft against you, but yet you want to put brakes on your deliverance. How bad do you really want to be free? God wants us to be just like this woman with the issue of blood who had, she had an issue for 12 years and she didn't give up. Even though the doctors couldn't figure out what it is, but she did not give up. She knew that Jesus can heal her. She knew that if she could just get close enough to Jesus to touch his garment, that she knew that she would be healed. And we all have to have that same mind frame that we know that if we can access the anointing, if we can get close to Jesus, we can get into his presence, that miracles can happen. We have to access the anointing. How bad do you want to be healed? And I've always tell people, even in his ministry, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to access the anointing? And you know what? And it's not, the anointing is very powerful. Like, again, it's, it's, it's not just for your healing and deliverance, but think about it. A very anointed man or woman in the workplace. A very anointed man or woman speaking at an event. An anointed man or woman in the hospital. A doctor, a nurse. God can work through a person that is anointed, that trusts God for everything. And that's why I really like this mighty woman of God who gave the testimony about her faith. She's accessed the anointing. She believes the miracles that she did healing people. And without a doubt, she knows 
she accessed the anointing. She doesn't doubt. She knows. She expects God to heal and deliver. And that's what we have to do. And as I was listening to her testimony, I said, wow, what an example of accessing the anointing. And that's how God wants us to be. We have to trust him for everything and not doubt at all. Have that faith and believe that God can do it. He can do it. And he will do it. But all of heaven is accessed by faith. Faith moves mountains. Doubt and belief destroys it. God wants us to really want it. He wants us to trust him. Knowing that he can do it. Amen? Amen. So what can hinder? Some of the other things that can hinder your anointing. I mentioned doubt and unbelief. Uh, another one is worrying what people would think. What would they think if I were, I, I, was, I was talking with uh, Jay uh, Barlett. Uh, he's a pastor that does inner healing and delivers. And he gave the story. And we actually talked with him at lunch about it. But he gave the story that he went to a funeral. And there was, um, um, he was sitting in the back. The casket was open. And the Lord spoke to him. Go raise him. He's like, what? <laughs> he heard it again. Go raise him. But then, you know what? He was worried what people would think. Right. And um, so he, he didn't do it. But then he repented. When he got outside, he repented before the Lord. He said, Lord, give me another chance. And guess what? The Lord did. And I think he raised several people from the dead from that point. But you can't worry about what people think. And that's why I thank God for Pastor Mark Rice in his bag back there. He has been to malls and on the streets and ministering to people. And people begin to heal. He doesn't care what people think. People in the mall have seen him pray for people. Uh, seen him minister to people. He doesn't care what people think. He, ha he trusts the Lord. He knows that the Lord can heal. He has so many testimonies of people. And, I, and it just really blesses me to see what God is doing in this man of God's life. And I asked him a question today. What would the Mark Rice 10 years ago say to the Mark Rice today? <laughs> but it's amazing. It's amazing. What a testimony. What a testimony. But you can't worry about what people would think. And I, and I gave this testimony about, I was in um, Walmart and the Lord told me while I was in there, you're going to deliver someone. And I'm thinking in Walmart. And, um, and I heard that again, someone, someone is going to be delivered. I said, Oh no, I'm not casting out no demons in Walmart. You know, I was worried about what people would think, but you know what? I said, okay, Lord, whatever you want. And there was a lady that was on the next aisle over. And she said she had been praying that the Lord would send someone to her. And I was able to. But you know what? The Lord cleared those aisles. Nobody in the aisles. And I was able to do deliverance right there in Walmart. Get that demon out of her. Right there in, uh, at Swanee, Walmart. I sure did. But you cannot worry. You just have to focus on the Lord. And you have to trust him. Whatever he tells you to do something, do it. You cannot worry because worried about what people would say will hinder the anointing. God is trying to accomplish something with you. And he wants you to access that anointing. And we have to access it with faith. No, without worrying about what people think. I really do feel the Lord is going to test some of you. Now that you know, you're going to be somewhere. And the Lord is going to tell you to do something. And you need to access that anointing with faith, with belief, with trusting him. Am I right, Pastor Mark? You can't worry about what people think. Got to do it. And I have been in a situation where I was, you know, what do people think? I mean, I have been uh, outside, out in, uh, out in public, and, and I've and I've seen people that that was in my group that was ministering to people. And they started doing deliverance on them right there in the park. 
And I just kind of stood back and I said, well, we're outside in the park. What are people going to think? You know, but I can't worry about that. You know, when people in the Lord tells you to do something, you just, the Lord's going to take care of everything else. So we can't allow what people think to hinder the anointing. Amen. Again, so many people that I've ministered to that said, well, they want to choose how they want to be delivered. You can't do that. You have to allow the Holy Spirit. You can't put the Holy Spirit in a box. He can deliver you how he wants to deliver you. He can do it any way he chooses. You just need to surrender and say, Lord, have your way. And I'm hoping tonight that you would do the same thing, that you would just say, Lord, whatever you want to do, I surrender to you. God knows what's in you. He knows what you need to be delivered of. But don't try to control the Holy Spirit. If you do not want to be delivered, the Holy Spirit knows. He knows if there's doubt. He knows if you're afraid of what people would think. He knows that you would say, oh, I don't want them to see me. I'm not ready. He knows. And when that happens, your deliverance may not come. Let's access the anointing. Amen? Amen. The Lord says in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prof will, shall prophesy. And young men shall see visions and old men will dream dreams. Isn't that a beautiful thing? He will pour out his spirit. And there's just so much about the anointing that is very, very powerful. So I'm just going to, for time purpose, I'm just going to kind of skip over some stuff. And then when I have more time, we'll do the part two of that. But uh, what I want to say in summary, the anointing serves many important purposes, powerful purposes, including to have power to be an effective witness. Think about that. If people can see the power of God, Think about what a, what a witness that would be. If they can see signs, wonders, and miracles, especially a non-believer, and they see that, they're like, wow. So when God, when you access the anointing and signs and wonders and miracles flow, especially when you're in a surrounding, you guys are going to see something tonight. There's people here that are going to witness deliverance tonight for the first time. And they're going to see the power of God. They see how that would affect their lives. It enables us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. For he came to set the captives free. Jesus is a beautiful God. He wants us set free. He doesn't want us bound up spiritually. He wants us to be free. Bring recovery to the sight of the blind. He wants to heal. He wants to release the oppressed. To proclaim the Lord's favor and grace. Amen? Amen. To be a benefactor doing good to needy people. To break the devil's yoke in the lives of people that are bound up. To teach us and to help us know God's truth versus error. And, uh, you know, I've heard that a lot of churches are teaching, and I'm not putting churches down, but they don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in the power of God. They don't believe in anointing, but it is true. It is, God is a powerful God, and he loves us. Amen? Amen? So let's access the anointing using the key of faith, believing that God can do this. Amen? Amen. I don't want to lead, lead, lead everyone in a prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus. I choose to forgive. Everyone who's ever hurt me, disappointed me, mistreated me, or rejected me. And Lord, I forgive them. And I ask, Lord, that you forgive me for all of my sins. And Lord, I choose to forgive myself. For my past mistakes. I renounce all the sins of my ancestors. 
I renounce all the sins on my father's side of family. All the way back to Adam. I renounce all the sins on my mother's side of family. All the way back to Adam. I break the curse of incest, molestation, rape, stealing, looting, murder, death, suicide, fear, witchcraft, blood sacrifices, worshiping false gods and idols. I break those curses. Off of me, my family and my bloodline. In Jesus' name. Okay, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to put these spirits on notice. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to go out and let the anointing flow.